Well, the statistics of diabetes are getting higher and higher and increasing, and it's becoming a real pandemic. Um, more and more cases are expected, so it's time to address this condition once and for all. Uh, one out of two people are undiagnosed in the world, and there's, there's so much that we have to do. There's so much we still have to work on. And as you said, Melissa, that's all right. There is a lot of information on the internet and sometimes people get lost. They don't know how to distinguish or identify uh, trustworthy sources of information and that is essential. Welcome to the Type 1 and Midlife Podcast. My name is Melissa Slemp, a certified nutritional health coach and the founder and CEO of Abundant Health with Melissa, where I help women with type 1 diabetes to feel more empowered and live their best life despite their diagnosis. Each week, I will bring conversations and strategies from guest experts and my experience living with type 1 for over 40 years now. So if you're a woman ready to redefine how diabetes can look and feel for you, then the Type 1 in Midlife podcast is the show for you. Today in this amazing, heartfelt episode, we are joined by Lucy Amato. She's a dedicated force for change in the global diabetes landscape. Uh, She was diagnosed with type 1 diabetes in 1992, and her advocacy stems from her own diagnosis experience as a 10-year-old growing up in Spain. It's going to be an amazing story to hear um, how she works and how communication and education, her efforts um, help span the globe, representing organizations like the International Diabetes Federation and ISPAD. She holds a bachelor's degree in law, focusing on healthcare and patients, patient rights. And her mission is to uphold human rights, especially the right to health and life. And Lucy shares her diagnosis story and advocacy mission, her mission, and the global health challenges of non-communicable diseases. And we explore today the accessibility of information and peer support in English-speaking communities and discuss psychological techniques for emotional well-being in diabetes. Discover what inspires Lucy and fills her with hope, both personally and her advocacy work. Join us for um, this really profound conversation um, as we really open up um, just what is needed and what is um, what is what is in need within the Spanish-speaking community both abroad and here in North America. Um, so listen into these pos- positive changes that her and I speak into um, about diabetes care and the impact of the, the um, digital innovations that have really brought, brought this change um, to light and to make everything that we're doing possible. So listen, in. we hope you enjoy the show and please reach out with any feedback to hear your thoughts. Nothing you hear on this Type 1 and Midlife podcast should be a substitute for professional medical advice. Please always consult your doctor before changing your diet, insulin dosages, or health care plan. Well, hello and welcome. I am very, very excited to welcome Lucy to the show today. Hi, Lucy. Hi, Melissa. Thank you very much for having me today. Yes, this is exciting. This is a, um, you are going to expand on a segment of the world and the population, the global um, health challenge, which is another term that I know that you use to just kind of um, educate us on all the things that are happening around the world, especially in the community communities that you are closer to. So tell us a little bit about yourself. Um, your own life living with type one, if you want to share your diagnosis story or anything that would kind of stand out, we'd love to hear more about you. Yes. Well, I was diagnosed 31 years ago. Mm. I was 10 years old and my diagnosis story is different. And um, 
we we can learn lessons from from this story because, <laughs> okay i can't wait <laughs> yes i think i think we do because in my case it was really hard to as- accept my diabetes mm-hmm. uh, i couldn't accept that i was living with in this uh, condition until uh, at least 20 years later mm-hmm. and that's a lot of time but when i was diagnosed um i didn't continue living with my family i went to a boarding school because oh. they thought it was a very complicated disease to manage so they decided to leave me i felt really alone with my oh, diabetes wow. And it took me a lot of time to accept uh, the condition and to thrive with it. Nowadays, I'm doing great and I am fully dedicated to mm-hmm. diabetes. Uh, <laughs> that's wonderful because in, in the beginning, it was so hard to accept and such a taboo. And then it became uh, the reason why I'm doing everything I do. So everything changes um, for the better. It sure does. Wow. And, you know, I didn't know that part of your story. So that is incredible. So talk about <laughs> talk about a beginning and a relationship with the disease that truly inspired you and you just continue to give back. So this just, just adds to all that we're going to share today. So, so share a little bit about um, what you're doing now, your advocacy role, and what your mission is now. Because I I read, um, and I think it was on one of your, it was an article or an interview that you did, and you termed, um, you shared yourself, um, and, and the terms you used was your meaning, your mission, and your vocation in yes. life. And completely. Completely. Yes, I love and that. And it stuck with me when I saw that. So I had to mention yes. it. Yes, at the moment, well, I, I am a lawyer and mm-hmm. I have specialized in patients' rights because I'm hating everything in my life in the same direction, mm-hmm. in diabetes and NCDs, uh, helping and supporting people living with these conditions and creating better policies for all the countries to develop the legislation and defend the rights that will protect people like us. We mm. need a certain treatment. We need uh, to have the same rights. We need to be stigma free. Many mm. things that we have to achieve everywhere in the world, not just in the United States, not just in Spain, not just in Argentina. This movement must be global. Mm. And I organize myself thanks to the uh, internet thanks to the global mm-hmm. network because nowadays internet uh, has made everything easier mm-hmm. uh, i'm going to speak about peer support how essential peer support is when we live with diabetes mm-hmm. and um, one thing that uh, helps us uh, get closer be together is the internet it's a miracle. It we sure can, is. Yes. Yeah, we can use it for very, very good purposes like mm-hmm. this one. Mm-hmm. I'm a lawyer. I'm a diabetes educator. Um, and I'm writing. I have a blog of my own. It's called mm-hmm. Glucomundo. Mm-hmm. And there I post resources, uh, articles, and the latest news in the diabetes world because another thing that is essential in my opinion for all of us living or not with diabetes is the access to information yeah information is power and correct information so and you know i won't get down that rabbit hole because that is something that we have to be very discerning about is what we're reading and learning and what's what's factual right yeah. And I'm, and I'm, yeah. Because and I'm, a, yeah. Go ahead and explain that. Cause I, you know, when it comes to when you're talking about advocacy, maybe it's the, it's the different, you know, the statistics around what's happening around the world and sharing the truth. So, um, yeah. Do you, do you have anything around that that you can share as far as maybe something that maybe, you know, that would surprise us? Huh. 
Well, the statistics of diabetes are getting higher and higher mm -hmm. and increasing, and it's becoming a real pandemic. Mm -hmm. um, more and more cases are expected. So it's time to address this condition once and for all. Uh, one out of two people are undiagnosed in the world. And there's, there's so much that we have to do. There's so much we still have to work on. Yeah, And as you said, Melissa, that's all right. There is a lot of information on the internet and sometimes people get lost. They don't know how to distinguish or identify uh, trustworthy sources of information and that mm -hmm. is essential. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Yeah, so um, how, um, how are you bringing the truth um, you know, you talked about your articles um, and all the way that you're able to reach people. Um, how is that something that you're able to stay very um, accurate on? And um, where do you pull your your information from? And yes, from congresses, mm -hmm. from uh, latest papers and scientific studies. And well, in the case of uh, amplifying projects of other members of the diabetes community, okay. just um, delivering this information and spreading the word about them, because that's another goal or objective of the site to amplify other people's projects and make them visible, especially within the Spanish speaking community. Mm. There is a, a huge community in the United yes, States. Yes, yes. So you're just. So I'm going to back up. Global Health Challenge. So you're you're talking because I know you specifically because this is obviously a community near and dear to your heart. This is you know this is your um, this is your community. This is where you grew up. These these are the people that are near to you. This is family. So how how does that cross over? Or does it, does it cross over to those communities here in North America, in the United States, as opposed to say where, where um, you live? Is there a difference as far as how these people are being um, cared for, people with diabetes? And there are differences in every country. Mm -hmm. However, there are many things that we have in common. And the main thing, that unfortunately we have in common is that nowadays there is still a great lack of access to um, diabetes education, proper diabetes education. Mm -hmm. People are lacking information, valuable information that they need in order to keep their right to health and right to life. Yeah. which is essential. I mean, people are being diagnosed and then sent home a few days later with a lot of information that is incomplete. And well, they still have a lot of doubts. So mm -hmm. it's really important to, to have a follow-up with doctors that maybe can just offer you five minutes because they have so many appointments mm -hmm. and mm -hmm. that's where the challenge begins. And I think that that happens everywhere. Yeah. And that's why uh, our services, Melissa, as coaches, uh, diabetes educators are so valuable sure because is, yes. people can find uh, somebody that is there. Yeah, yeah, yeah. That and 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 you you know you mentioned peer support, but it does start. You know, and I I hear these stories as well. Um, just the lack of education upon diagnosis, and you know, and then we think about the cost of that long term. Obviously, because you know, short term is you know people are not feeling well, they're not being cared for, they 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 don't know what to ask for when it comes to insulins and diabetic supplies they don't know what they need because they don't even understand really how the body works right or how the system works exactly. so th there's such a there's such a gap in that and then and then you talk about the things that we really consider a luxury here which is <laughs> coaches and <laughs> access to medical um and then it's understanding what they're learning because maybe it is that language barrier so maybe the education you're talking about is not um, communicated in a manner that they can understand. 
And that's a that's probably a gap. Um, and uh, correct me if I'm wrong, but that is that's what I am witnessing, and that's what I see too. So, yes, we have two things: the language barrier, and that is strictly the language. For example, many people from Mexico go to the United States, and then they live there, and all the communications are in English, which made, uh, makes everything more difficult to understand because it is not a normal conversation. It involves many new <laughs> terminology, and, many yes, words yes. that are very specific yeah. in medicine. Mm -hmm. And on the other hand, uh, we have uh, information that is not trustworthy and we we have to know where to seek uh, information um, and be really cautious uh, regarding what we found on the internet because with the proliferation of influencers, um, it's difficult to distinguish what's uh, right, what's wrong. Right, right. And and then we think about, you know, myself, um, the coaching that I do with women is even with all the education, even with all the supplies, even with all the medical tools we have, everybody is still so different. We're so unique. So then you throw that into the puzzle. You know, it's hard enough just to kind of break it down simply your day to day simple care. But we're not all the same. We, we, you know, our schedules are different. Our lifestyle is different. Our yes. our economic um, availability of all this is different. So I can understand it. It can definitely be a layer. It, it's just layers and layers of incompetent Absolutely. care care within the um, medical system. Besides, yeah. we all have a different body. And mm -hmm. one size does not fit all. No, <laughs> sure it doesn't. Mm -hmm. So, yeah, we can live with different uh, health conditions besides mm -hmm. diabetes. Mm -hmm. uh, well, it's a complex puzzle. Mm -hmm. Lifestyle, yeah. our emotions, our mindset, because we all live in different societies. Mm -hmm. And sometimes our societies um, have certain and written rules uh, and we try to follow them to be part of the community uh, for mm -hmm. example in Spain we love food and everything <laughs> right. is celebrated with food uh -huh, uh, right. you gather with your friends with your family and food is there uh, always present and always a lot of food uh, so rich in carbohydrates oh my god so that's mm -hmm. not your diabetes best friend right right so <laughs> yes education is so key yeah just understanding <laughs> that impact yes yes most definitely so what are you um how directly connected are you within these communities and um, yeah and if you could share what what is the main issues that you're supporting these communities on well, first of all, raising awareness on the need of diabetes yes. education. I'm a consultant for um, Fundación Argentina Diabetes. That is a foundation that is spreading the word about the importance of education for people living with diabetes in Argentina, but not just to the community, not just to the diabetes community, but also to chemists, teachers, uh, police okay. services. That's so essential because in the case of uh, hypoglycemia, for example, mm -hmm. if a policeman is not well trained, he might mistake that for for being drunk. Exactly. Yes. Yeah. Problem. Yes. 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 That happens. That happens everywhere, doesn't it? Yeah. 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 It is all about yeah. that awareness, knowing what to look for. Yes, and, and in the case of teachers, the um, there's a recent study going on regarding diabetes in school where mm -hmm. it is studied as a right, the right of that kid to have the highest level of health when he or she is going or attending school. Mm -hmm. And to do that, we need uh, staff that are trained, uh, who are trained to to know how to test the kids' blood sugar right. or give an injection, et cetera. 
Right, right. All those things. Yeah. And this is this is kind of a sidebar, but school nurses, I remember growing up and I don't know the answer to this question um, because I'm I'm not really that I'm not that connected in the school system, you know, within my own community. You know, my daughter's grown and gone. So she <laughs> it's been a while. But I remember back in the day, school nurses being present on campus. Um, I know colleges do have that. Um, but I wonder if um, cause it, it's, it puts a, it can put a lot of burden on a, te- on a teacher, you know, the classroom is tough enough to manage. I know it, it is here in, in the U S yeah. um, and I'm, I'm not giving excuses as to why, you know, cause it's obviously important to know who your students are and to know what their needs are, but yeah, that's, that is a lot, isn't it? It's a lot. It's complex. It's yes. complex here in Spain. They are fighting uh, to get nurses in, in every school for mm. these cases and in Argentina we don't have any nurses at all and, okay. and it a lot of work uh, still needs to be done uh, on the matter but yes as you say it is challenging and it is not that easy some some school staff are also afraid of learning because they are afraid of diabetes it's a oh. scary disease it's a big responsibility but uh, it would be ideal that every school learns how to manage this uh, in order to lose this uh, fear to diabetes because they fear diabetes because they don't know it. It's they don't a stranger, it. right? That's and right. When it becomes you fear what you don't you know. know. That's yes. true. The- then it's that not is... that bad. It's like us living with diabetes. <laughs> yes. <laughs> yes. We had years of being scared, didn't we? Until we understood. Yes. Um, you, you know, and, and you bring up a good point. Um, self-advocacy, that's that's something that we're all um, hopefully becoming more aware of. I know I'm, I'm going to have another um, guest on here soon, and we're going to be talking about this topic. I think it's real important. Uh, Mm -hmm. For everybody, no matter what, you know, when it comes to obviously all areas of life, but when it comes to medical conditions and being really understanding of, but it it starts with education. I mean, we have to understand what our body is feeling and doing first in order to even know what to advocate for. Yes. Mm -hmm. And we also need to, for example, in the case of the latest developments in the treatment we need to know, for example, what technologies are available mm-hmm. worldwide in order to advocate to, to get access to that technology. Because if we don't know that it exists in the mm-hmm. first place, how are we going to claim that for mm-hmm. our children, for example, right? Yes. So education yes. is everything and information and the right information. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Yeah, yeah, that's really, really important. You, um, it, it, There's a term that you use that is called non-communicable diseases. So it's, it's NCD is how you, you, you know, and you know, that's interesting because I actually had to, I, obviously I understand the word when I see it. But I've never heard that term before. So, <laughs> and, and it's interesting. So, can you explain why this is a relevant term and why it, it's, yeah, just explain that if you could. Uh, of course, non communicable diseases are diseases such as diabetes, cancer, obesity. Right. And, and it's uh, essential and important to mention all these diseases. Because when I was trained to become an international or global advocate with NCD Alliance, um, we were taught we were taught that uh, to influence the decisions of the decisions makers, the um, the key is that you just don't focus on your story. Your story mm-hmm. represents you. But Mm -hmm. behind your story, behind yourself, many, many more are in the same situation. And that's what you have to transmit, that it is not just you. It's you who's speaking. But Mm -hmm. with your story, you are telling the story of millions who, for example, also live with diabetes and need a proper access to treatment in order to avoid complications. This is one example. And why are NCDs important? Because when we want to influence the decision making in the context of a country, 
it's it's good that if we act as a team, if we yeah. act with people who are also fighting for cancer, um, obesity, if we join forces, we are stronger. So we can advocate for better uh, conditions, laws, uh, if we all work together and not in yes. silos. That is the yes. passion, right? <laughs> I love that. Yeah. So it's 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 having a voice. It's having yes. a designated voice to represent the cause and the needs, um, yes. it, which is yes. exactly what you're doing. Yeah. And, and join forces, not just with... Um, people like you living with diabetes, but also living with other conditions. Mm -hmm. And because if if we all join forces, as I said, we become stronger and we can mm -hmm. reach much more. Right, right. Our, lo our, our voices are louder, right? <laughs> uh, obviously, yes. Yes, the loud voice gets heard, right? Yes. In, in life, in life, if we work as a team, we, we always uh, win. Mm hmm. Really good. Really good. I appreciate that, Lucy. So can you can you um, share what are some specific psychological techniques or therapies that benefit emotional, you know, the the emotional aspects of living with with diabetes? Do you is this, this is something that you um, point to and support and teach? Mm hmm. Yes, a uh, cognitive behavioral uh, therapy helps a lot. And in the daily life, there are many things that really make the difference. Mindfulness, uh, be aware of what we are feeling. Just uh, mm -hmm. stop when we are feeling nervous or overwhelmed by diabetes, by daily life, by hyperglycemia. Stop, mm -hmm. breathe. Try to relax, do exercise. Exercise mm -hmm. is a miracle. It sure and, is. Mm -hmm. um, and the topic of this podcast is is um, a great benefit for mm -hmm. emotional well being, and and that is peer support. Yes, yes, peer support yes. because nobody mm -hmm. <laughs> nobody understands yeah. you better than another person living with diabetes mm -hmm. uh, it's very nice to to find your community and as I asked a friend of mine um, an hour ago I asked her <laughs> what does a peer support mean to you because I'm going to quote you and she uh -huh. said oh it's everything mm -hmm. it's family mm -hmm. because I felt so alone mm -hmm. And during the first years of my diabetes, and I said, oh, yes, it was the, the same for me. Mm -hmm. And well, now we are um, active in the community. We exchange uh, messages all the time, activities, projects. It changed everything. Yes, it sure does. Yes, yes. It's And, and you know, you, you mentioned at the beginning about the Internet, you know, and um, you know, I was diagnosed in 82, you know, guess what? There was no internet back in 1982. <laughs> we were going to our public libraries to, you know, to, um, to look up resources. And so, yeah, talk about being lost. I, I, I know that was part of my isolation, just not, not being connected. There wasn't an easy way to connect. So yeah, we just naturally, or I, in my case, I, I can't speak for, for anybody else, but in my case, I, I felt like I was the only one living with yes. diabetes, <laughs> which is yes. such a terrible thing, especially, you know, it's just the, the you know, the things that we, <laughs> we, we, you know, we have to do every day, obviously injections and testing blood sugar, and then that up and down of, of how we're feeling and no one else can, can understand that. And I, I don't think I, I obviously I didn't even know how to communicate it because I didn't understand it. So yes. yeah, it's almost like I, um, cause I was 14 diagnosed when I was 14 and it just kind of lived kind of just felt kind of numb for years, mm. just kind of, yeah, numb, I think is the right word. Just didn't really feel. I just, it's curious, just, Melissa, yeah. because we all had the same experiences mm -hmm. uh, some years ago. And, mm -hmm. and it brings me a lot of joy to see young people nowadays uh, that despite they are diagnosed, it is all, always 
something that we would rather avoid, right? Yes. But at least um, many people do count on good technology and they can be connected to other people because they're, they are not just the associations, but the online community. And we mm -hmm. can uh, we can all um, find friends and like-minded yeah. peers. Absolutely. That's wonderful. Yeah. Now, do you, do you think? Um, are are you seeing in the in the Spanish community that people are leaning in to more peer support? Is that something? Because you know, I I still witness that here. I still think, and I think this might just be the way people are and their personalities, and maybe their um their privacy with their health at that are not as comfortable being with other people or talking about diabetes. Yes. Um, and that's unfortunate, you know, hopefully that will change it at some point, they will kind of break out of that shell and maybe reach out and get more connected. Um, but do you see? Um, how do you see that in the Spanish community? Are people? Well, I think it's the same, but there same. is more taboo in the type is 2 it? diabetes community. Mm. They are less active and it's yeah. more difficult to interact with people living with type 2 diabetes. And I think it is because of the stigma that is mm. associated to the disease. Um, yeah. Even if there is diabetes stigma in general, right? And we have sure to is. fight mm. against it. Uh, in fact, there's a pledge that I invite you to sign if you haven't done so yet. No, I don't, I don't know that I have. So yeah, uh, well, and that's definitely something we can share here with the listeners too. So yes, yes. yes. yes it's all about getting the, connected with that. That is so cool. There's a pledge to end in diabetes stigma and a consensus with 51 experts worldwide is coming. Mm -hmm. um, well, the goal is to involve our healthcare professionals and everybody to put an end to to the stigma, mm -hmm. the, to get the informed, to be educated, and uh, also be mindful when speaking. That is the mm -hmm. language matters movement. Mm -hmm. Because the words that we say are really important. Mm -hmm. Language matters, and it matters a lot. For example, in the way that the healthcare professional treats you when you go uh, to the doctor's office. Mm -hmm. uh, non-compliant, that's not the, the best mm -hmm. word that you can use because maybe mm -hmm. you are doing your best. Yes. Uh, maybe you have some circumstances that are preventing you from achieving the ide ideal outcomes, but you are trying and mm -hmm. those words do not help. Also using person living with diabetes before diabetic mm -hmm. is good for some people. Uh -huh. Why? Because we are not just diabetes. Right. We are much more. Right. You are Melissa, you are a mother, you're a coach, I'm a mm -hmm. lawyer, uh, yeah. I'm a diabetes educator, not just my diabetes, right? That's so right. I, I would right. rather be called a Lucy. <laughs> right. Understood. <laughs> yes. 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 Yeah. In some cases, in some conversations, it it can come out and define us. Yeah. That term diabetic. Yeah. In, yeah. Very, very important. Um, and, you know, sometimes we can even introduce ourselves that way. So I, I, I think it's, <laughs> I've, I've caught myself and I don't think it's, you know, I, I don't think I'm as sensitive to it, but I'm, I mean, I'm not personally sensitive to it. If, if somebody refers to me that way, because I understand, you know, you know, that they, they don't really understand the difference and, or that label, because it is kind of like a label. Yes, it um, is. But I'm more mindful of it now. Um, <laughs> and it's funny how times change. And, you know, and but, you know, the beauty is, is that we're talking about this disease and this community is getting a lot more awareness. And, um, we're, you know, we're actually, um, well, we're coming up on November, which is national. Well, it, it might be world Yes. Diabetes Aware Month. Yes. I'm, I'm assuming it's, it's World, World Diabetes Day yes. on the 14th of November. Of November, that's right. yes. <laughs> so it, that's another great opportunity. Um, I'm actually, I'm, I'm looking to do some education here at a, um, a local um, gym that I belong to just to help spread the word. Because, you know, I think that's one of the biggest things too. Even people that we know and spend time with is just the the confusion as to what diabetes is. And, you know, the, you know, the different types and how they're treated. Yes, I, I think yes, we're all, yes. we're all tossed into one bucket. Um, 
And again, that's just back to just people not understanding and not getting, not being close enough to really the disease and, and what it means to, you know, take insulin and what insulin is for and all those things. So it's really challenging, Melissa, mm -hmm. because even uh, with healthcare professionals, it's difficult because if you go to the hospital um, and the reason that you attend the hospital is one thing that is not diabetes, well, you might be in danger because they won't know how to treat your diabetes. And that's still a reality. Yeah. And people are afraid. Yeah, yeah. Uh, another word that I would like to yes, to mention mm -hmm. is a control of your diabetes. Mm. The term that is preferred would be management. Manage. Yes. Why? <laughs> because it's difficult to control <laughs> your diabetes, if not impossible. Impossible. Yes. <laughs> That, yeah. that, yeah, you bring up a very good term and word mm. that, um, yes, it's, we can never be in control and no. um, definitely manage, um, navigate. I like that word. Yes. You know, we're just, we're just rolling with it every day. And yeah, mm. the term, yeah. And, and I, I heard that term within the healthcare system as well. Again, they don't quite understand again, because they don't live with it. So if yes, you don't yes. live with it, it's like controlling your blood sugars. Well, huh. that's why the lived experience <laughs> is so important. Yeah, It's a, yeah. in fact, it's another kind of expertise that should be taken into account when you're creating new laws, policies, or yeah. when you are creating everything yes. on diabetes, even products for us, because yeah. we understand we have the expertise of, of living with the condition 24-7. Uh, and that's why uh, I think that we people living with diabetes are the best diabetes educators I because agree. we get it. Uh -huh. And there's so <laughs> many of us. That's so good. Yes, that is so good. Yes, very important. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And, you know, another thing, like if we could even go deeper with that, too, is just the medical training. Right. So it starts when the doctors are being trained and what they're learning and the terms they're using, um, they're, you know, because that's a big open book because, you know, I, you know, um, traditional medicine um, to me needs an overhaul. You know, it needs to be a little bit more functionally based based on the whole body. You know, the doctors need to really understand a little bit yes. more, a lot more. Um, you know, they do the best they can. They're well trained, but um yeah I, I, yeah, I, you know, we talk about education. Well, it needs to start yes. with that as well. I think that yeah. that a medical education is a holistic approach uh, to treat the and to treat the not just the disease but the person. The person, yes. Yeah, yes. In I think that in this aspect, things are improving. At least, at least here in Spain, they are trying to humanize uh, medical attention. And it's important that we raise awareness on these issues and that we talk about them. Mm -hmm. Because in the past, um, well, even the term, the word patient implies mm -hmm. patience. <laughs> mm -hmm. And just listen to what the doctor has to say and then mm -hmm. follow instructions. Mm -hmm. But in the case of chronic conditions such as diabetes, we cannot be patient and passive because uh, our life depends on us all yes. the time. Mm -hmm. We have to manage and navigate our insulin doses uh, and what we are eating or the decision that we are taking the next minute mm -hmm. all yeah. the time yeah. so passivity yes. is not an option if That's we want right. to be healthy yeah yeah we got to take part in our own care for sure absolutely yeah. worldwide yes. yeah yeah and just like you say you know we started this conversation talking about education it's probably going to end there too we're not done talking though I wanted to ask you too so what is the access to medical um, supplies and insulin what what does that look like in um, Spanish communities and in um, Argentina in the Spanish access? community, we can't complain. There is good access. Good. 
In fact, people living with type 2 diabetes are now claiming to get access to sensors, glucose sensors. But oh, okay, um, okay. but um, sensors, test strips, insulin, uh, and pumps are covered by the national health system. The situation in Argentina is different. There, we have a law. Uh, that uh, allows us to get everything that our endocrinologist prescribes. However, this law mm, does not operate as it should. And uh, as a matter of fact, uh, these supplies are generally not given unless people file a lawsuit and mm -hmm. follow... Uh, difficult procedures and spend money and energy. Um, no, no. Yes, the situation is difficult. Well, the situation of the country at the moment is is difficult too. Okay, yeah, yeah, yeah. That just kind of goes with what's going on. Yeah, that just kind of mirrors the situation there. Wow, makes it. Now, is, is this a change based on um, the condition of the country? Or is this is this something that's always kind of been in place? This, on this no, lack no, no, no. In, in Argentina, we have good laws, mm -hmm. but the law is not enough if it doesn't translate into reality. Mm -hmm. And mm -hmm. yes, we have access, but not everybody, just mm -hmm. a few, gotcha. just a few. Yeah. And we have to change that. Yeah. And we also have to spread uh, awareness and people should know that there is a law that it is right and that they have to to claim what's theirs mm -hmm. and well i don't know if you know about the case of mexico melissa but mm -hmm. in the case of mexico people pay for their sensors out of pocket oh yes and um, imagine mm -hmm. paying for your diabetes supplies out of pocket i can imagine yeah yes yes it's in in many countries it's a more, it's almost your salary. Mm -hmm. yes. <laughs> yes. Not eating, just paying for the diabetes supplies. Mm -hmm. So it, that must be really frustrating and it's completely unfair and it's something that has to be changed. Yeah, yeah. And and it results in poor care because people can't afford the, yes. you know, the prop. The, Obviously. The, yeah, yeah. And that just costs more money. So, yes. For example, India, some families have to decide between feeding their family or buying insulin. Insulin. So, they yeah. start rationing the insulin. And in the end, the children develop complications. But it's so complex to change this reality. Yes. Yeah. But even if yeah. it is complex, it's important to raise our boys and and try to do something, no matter how small, uh, everything counts. Yeah, absolutely. Well, you know, you're, you're amazing. I, I've really enjoyed, I, I continue to learn more from you. This conversation has just opened up my eyes even more to what you're doing and how much that you're advocating for um, the, the whole world, you know, um, because yes. these, yeah, because the, what you're, what you're sharing um, applies to everybody. And depending on, again, where those communities are, where the need is, um, the voice, you know, our voices need to be heard. So we definitely appreciate you leading, mm -hmm. helping to lead that. Yes. Thank you, Melissa. Is is there anything else that you'd like to share that we should walk away with? And, you know, I always like to leave with hope because, there's hope in all things, hope through the hard, hard work and all the things that we, um, you know, know that are right and the, and the proper things to do. So, um, yeah. So what can you leave us with that as far as what you are looking at and what is looking hopeful for you within um, the Spanish community and diabetes care? Well, um, of course, I will finish with a message of hope. Mm -hmm. And as my story began, diabetes mm -hmm. was hard to accept. And in the end, it became a mission and a meaningful a thing in life. So the same way, spreading diabetes education and trying to achieve the best for our community mm -hmm. will take us to very good places. Yeah, totally agree. Yes, yes, yes. <laughs> we got to keep pushing. We got to keep pushing, you know, because when it is the right thing, um, it 
um, the truth and the right things will prevail and um, people will benefit. And it's important that people with diabetes know that they are not alone, that mm -hmm. we are all going through the same and that we are here to support each other. And in case of people who are struggling with their daily management, that we, they have coaches like you and me, and they can call us and we will be there for them. Absolutely. Absolutely. Yes. There's so many. Yeah. There's so many free organizations, you know, the, the peer support is available. So yeah, that's definitely something to leave everybody with is, is to seek help, ask questions, definitely connect with you. And that is something. Um, so how can people find you? And I'm going to link all this in the show notes to make it super easy for them to learn more. Yes, well, my handle is Glucomundo everywhere, Instagram, Facebook, um, TikTok. Uh, and my website is uh, www.glucomundo.com. Glucomundo mm -hmm. means gluco is for glucose and mundo mm -hmm. is world in Spanish. Mm -hmm. So it's a world of glucose in I our world. <laughs> <laughs> love that. Oh, It has a meaning for sure, just like you do. You are, yeah, you're a joy. I really appreciate what you're doing and to be here with us and to share um, share what's going on. It's real important. Yes, yeah, let's get out there and raise our voices and come together just like you have, have already inspired he, us here as listeners. And, Thank uh, you, Melissa. going to continue to spread the word. Well, thanks again. And yeah, definitely check out the show notes here. We can connect um, so you can collect connect with Lucy um, Amato and her website and online and reach out and say hello. Maybe send her a message on Instagram and say hello or on TikTok. I'm sure, you know, um, because that is how we met. We just connected and started talking and I realized yes. what a, <laughs> what a amazing gift that you are giving and that, that more people need to know about you. So just so happy to spend <laughs> some time with you. Me too, Melissa. Thank yes. you so much. You are welcome. And we appreciate everybody here listening and definitely share this episode in this show with other women, other communities. Um, this is an important topic, important information that we all need to be aware of and to connect with Lucy and her website too. So have an amazing day, hope filled and keep doing what you're doing. Until next time, bye for now. Thanks for tuning in to the Type 1 in Midlife podcast. And be sure to subscribe, rate, and review right here on iTunes. And you're invited to connect with our Type 1 in Midlife community um, on the free Honey Health app. Here we discuss the podcast topics in a group chat, um, a chance for you to ask questions and take action on what we share here on the show. You can find the app link to download for free right here in the show notes. And for free resources, uh, you can visit me at AbundantHealthWithMelissa.com. And your support means so much. Thank you.